A linked list is a sequence, so it should behave like a sequence behaves. In order to make that happen, we'd like to support both element selection using square brackets and the built-in len function. Now there are special method names that get invoked automatically by Python when a user-defined class is followed by the element selection or passed in as an argument to the built-in len function. So all we have to do is define how to get an item out of a linked list or how to compute the length of a linked list in order to have linked list instances operate in the same way as a built-in list with the len and element selection operators. So linked lists are sequences. In addition to the definition that we have so far, which is the same I showed you before, but I've abbreviated the assert statement because we just don't need to worry about that right now, do we? We're going to define two new methods. One is called the getItem method. The getItem method gets the element at index i. Now, if this ever gets invoked, we know that the linked list is not empty. If someone tried to look up an item in the empty list, they would just be looking it up in the empty tuple. They'd get an error. So we know there's at least one element here. And the question is, is that the element that the user is asking for or not? Well, the index i tells us. If they want the zeroth element, that's self.first. So we just return it. Otherwise, we let rest take care of the hard work. So element i minus 1 in the rest of the list is the same as element i in the whole list. This element selection syntax here is actually going to invoke the same method, assuming self.rest is a linked class, which, by the way, it is, or it's empty. If it's empty, we'll get an error that says the index is out of bounds. If it's not empty, then eventually, as we call get item over and over and over again with i minus 1 and then i minus 1 minus 1, we'll eventually have i equals 0, and that will be the first element of the list we're looking for. So this element selection syntax calls this method. That's a built-in feature of Python, a feature of this special method name. Now, computing the length is even simpler. The length of a linked list is one more than the length of the rest of the linked list. A simple recursive definition. This is actually implicitly a recursive call to len. Why is that? Well, the built-in len function, when passed a user-defined instance, just looks up the underscore underscore len method and invokes it because it doesn't know how to compute the length of anything, so it has to ask the object itself. Now, there's a special case, a base case here. The base case is that link.empty is the rest of the rest of the rest of the rest somewhere down the list, and the length of empty is zero. That's a built-in property of the empty tuple. So by using a zero-length sequence here, we come up with a very succinct definition of the len method. So methods can be recursive too. These are both recursive methods. They're both implicitly recursive because we're using element selection syntax in the built-in len function. But all those do is make recursive calls right back to the method in which they're written. So here's the linked list class, with empty defined as the empty tuple, and in it in get item and len defined. There's also a wrapper method here in order to print it out in just the way I'd type it in. And down at the bottom, I've defined s to be the linked list containing 3, 4, and 5. So s is 3, 4, 5, which means its length is 3. If I built a longer list, say by having 2 followed by s, that would be a length 4 list. If I asked what's the length of that, I'll get 4. If I ask what's the length of link.empty, I'll get zero, because the implementation is just that empty is the empty tuple. Now what about element selection? 
S is 3, 4, 5, so the element at index 0 should be 3, at index 1 should be 4, at index 2 should be 5, and at index 3 we should get an error. Index out of range. Oh, that's reasonable. That's because we made so many recursive calls that eventually we reached an empty self.rest, which you cannot take an element of because it has no elements. Now, of course, I could have written len iteratively because this is just a sequence. It doesn't require recursion. I could have written that the length starts out at 1 and the rest that I'm keeping track of starts out as self.rest while it's the case that rest is not link.empty. I could increment length. I could also change rest to be the rest of rest and that way I would move down the length of the sequence. Eventually, I would reach the end and I could return that length. So now the length of s is still 3. But wow, the iterative version took quite a bit of effort versus the recursive version. Looking for errors in this logic is much easier than looking for errors in the five lines we just had before.